Well, hi, eighth grade science students. So I'm here for my classes and Mrs. Robinson's today. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our lesson two assignment. So right now, you should have already completed the assignment that Mrs. Robinson explained whenever she did the Ed Puzzle of the pocket mouse, the brown pocket mouse. And also then you completed um, an Ed Puzzle, that video where you answered questions, and then you went through and you answered three questions for her. So we're now at the, the instruction video that I'm giving you for our next part. And so here are the things that you're going to be learning uh, about um, for lesson two. So we want to look at the ecological relationships that are represented in food webs. We're going back a little bit because originally these um, these activities were set to we were going to be going back to school soon. So we're having to go back and we're stretching some of them out. So in ecological relationships, remember that's the ecosystem. It's all the living and non-living parts of that's what makes up an ecosystem. But we're going to be looking at the food webs. So if we're talking food, do you think that's biotic or abiotic? So you should be able to explain that. Um, we're going to look at food webs and see how they can change as a result of environmental changes. So maybe we have a flood or we have a drought or we have extra predators or extra prey or diseases that come in. We're going to see how that's going to impact the food web. And then we're also going to see why um, a change in a producer population can have a large impact on the entire food web and not just those things that directly eat or consume, I should say, um, producers. So let's go look back here and we're going to see what we've got going on. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to be watching an Ed Puzzle video. And that Ed Puzzle video is going to be titled Food Webs. It's one of the Crash Course Kids. There will be eight questions that go along with it. Um, when you're done, usually Ed Puzzle already turns the assignment in for you, but just double check and go back to view assignments after you've completed that and make sure that it is turned in if there's a turn in option. Um, but a lot of times Ed Puzzle will do that for you. Um, the next thing after you've done that Ed Puzzle, now in that video, um, she may talk about limiting factors. And let's talk about what a limiting factor is. It's something that limits. Well, organisms depend on and compete for living and non-living things. So maybe an organism depends on food, obviously. Well, it's going to compete for food for with other organisms in the environment. If there's not enough food there, that's limits because they're competing for it. If there's not enough, then some organisms are going to die. That's going to be a limiting factor that limits that population size. Um, it could also be um, something that's not living that can limit the size, it's like um, the amount of oxygen or for plants purpose, the amount of carbon dioxide in an area because plants have to have carbon dioxide. Um, so that would be one thing. So that is what the Ed Puzzle video is going to be like. After you're done with the Ed Puzzle video, your next task in the list would be to complete a worksheet over competition in food webs. And so when you click and open this worksheet, it's going to automatically assign your name to it. And then when it's, it's there, this is important. You're going to have some ecology facts that are listed here. These ecology facts, since we're not in class, we're not taking notes, we're not having the discussions. So these basically are the notes that you would refer to to help support your information. Um, You've got a couple of graphs here that show some of the limiting factors that can be represented graphically. Um, one would be food, for example. I've always found this um, diagram or this graph to be confusing. Always look at your X and Y axis. This says bacterial population. Now remember, bacteria are a lot like plants. If you put a plant in a pot, all of its nutrients and soil and space and water would be in that plant in that pot. And if you just left it alone, it would eventually use it all up. And what would happen to your plant? It would die. Well, the same thing here with this bacteria. Bacteria, scientists can grow them in little Petri dishes and those Petri dishes have nutrients. Once that bacteria, oh, I don't know why I did that. Once that bacteria um, will have enough nutrients to grow, but then once it doesn't have any more food there, or maybe the temperature is wrong, it's going to die off. So that's what this is showing. Here we have our predator population, and which is down here, and our prey population. So predator and play, prey interactions are what we see in our food webs. 
So you're going to want to pay attention to these facts and refer back to them for some of your questions. And then we have vocabulary or bold print. So in the video, she talked about native and invasive species, and we have those definitions here for you. Now, here's where you're going to click in and you're going to use our first terrestrial food web here to actually answer the questions. And so I do want you to remember, in competition in a food web, whatever is getting the energy is doing the eating gets the arrow. So the arrow is the eater. That's the consumer um, or the predator. The prey is what's being eaten. So if you have an organism that has two arrows going away from it, that means it's being eaten or consumed by two different things. And those would be in competition with each other. So they're competing. So you're going to want to go through and answer these questions. Once you're finished, then oh, when we get to number seven, I forgot, we now have an aquatic food web. Now, we may not be as familiar with aquatic food webs because we don't all live by a lake and go fishing and that kind of thing and pay attention, but aquatic food webs work the same way. It's really easy to um, notice the producers because producers make their own food. They're not consuming any other organisms in the picture. And so uh, sometimes it will show the sun actually giving that energy. Sometimes it doesn't. And you just uh, know that they are autotrophs and they make their own food. Okay, so you will go ahead and you will complete the worksheet just like we've done in past weeks. You will then submit the worksheet and then this is where you have to do the two turn ins. You have to go back and view the assignment and turn it in because the first submit just attaches it. Now, you are going to want to come back to this worksheet because in our last assignment, this is the assessment questions. These questions are a Google form and you are going to want to use your uh, Number seven for Spradling's class, I'm not sure what Miss Robinson's is, but it's the one prior to this. You're going to use that worksheet that you just finished, and you are going to transpose those answers into this Google form. And when you're finished with that form, you submit it, and you are done for the week. So I hope you had a great week, and uh, we should do miss you guys. Bye.